Hello friends, welcome to Grace for the Heart and Soul. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. As we begin our time together, my friends, let us ask for God's mercy and healing to help us yeah, to start off knowing that we are forgiven by God and that God blesses our actions of service and care. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we begin our day of service together, grace for the heart and soul, send forth your Holy Spirit upon us. Bless us. Help us to serve you through service of others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, all of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble your th yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Through Sylvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, I have written this short letter to encourage you and to testify that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. Your sister church in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. The Word of the Lord. Our response will be, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I will sing your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Happy are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long and extol your righteousness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After rising from the dead, Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. 
And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. And then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And the eleven went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, friends. Here we are, gathered together on this grace for the heart and soul, on this feast day of St. Mark. So first and foremost, to all the staff and teachers and administration and students and parents at St. Mark Catholic School, happy feast day. And to all of us are the same, because today we proclaimed the gospel from St. Mark. St. Mark's gospel is the second book in the New Testament. The words that we have heard today, in today's gospel, are these. After rising from the dead, Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. It is good to take a pause and a break and reflect. And today is that day where we pause and reflect. When we pause and reflect, it is good to reflect on the following questions. Who we are, where we are, and what are we doing? There's a lot of things going on in the world, and uh, one, the war still continues in Ukraine. There's conflict in Palestine and Israel, and we see injustices in the world. We see a lot of poverty. So the question is, what is our worldview? Because the way we see the world is the way we live our lives. Today is a good day to actually reflect and pause and think about that. Just to give you some numbers in the world today, we have uh, just over 8 billion people. And if we put that into perspective, let's say reduce that to 100 people. So just for the sake of, of numbers, we would actually find out that 51% uh, are women, 49 would be men. Almost 50% would be living in Asia, 20-some uh, would be living in Europe, 40% would be living in North and South America, and the rest in Africa and uh, Australia. But then one number that I want to bring to us is the following one. One-third of the population in the world is hungry. Or should I say they're dying because of the lack of bread? One-third is dying because of injustices and wars. And one third is actually dying because of overeating, because we have too many things. What is our worldview as we take and pause today? Let's think of the early Christians. Early Christians, they would even be singing as they were dying, as they were witnessing to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that martyria, the word martyr, comes from that word, which means witness. They were witnessing to Jesus Christ. Even in their death, they were witnessing to Christ. So brothers and sisters, friends of Jesus, the question is, as Jesus invites us all to go into the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation, how am I doing? Because as we looked upon the early Christians and we looked towards them, we see that they lived it with the joy, and they had the joy of the risen Lord. And nothing could stand in their way, not even death. Where are we? Sometimes we think it's going to take a lot of people, but sometimes I, I would actually say that it might start with us. What is my, and I'm going to use the word Catholic Christian worldview? How do I present myself to the world? Because we meet people, our colleagues, our students especially, and uh, we actually show, they see in us how we look upon the world. They're like billboards, in a sense. 
Let me just give you a couple of examples. When we think of, uh, of changes in the church and how things were renewed, we know in the Middle Ages, there was this young man who was rich and didn't want to do anything with the poor, but then God called him, Francis, go and rebuild my church. And he puts the brown robe on and completely dedicates his life to God. In our modern times, there was a woman who was four foot something. She put a white robe after she heard that call within a call. Remember, she was a nun already teaching in a high school. But then she heard a call within a call, I'm thirsty or I thirst for you. And that was a call to work among the poorest of the poor in the slums of Calcutta. When we take the gospel, because it, it is powerful, but when it is lived, when it's put into the action, that it's so powerful, then the world can be changed. We can change the world. Francis did it. St. Jesus of Calcutta did it. Many others have done it. The question is, as we reflect today on this day, and we go into the service, and I want to thank you on behalf of the church for always being there for our students. Yes, all of our staff of our Edmonton Catholic schools, not just not the teachers only and administrators, but all of our staff, because we all help our students to see Christ in one another. And I hope and my prayer is that we actually see Christ in our students, in our colleagues, in our staff, in our family members, in everyone. As Bishop David put it once in his homily, sometimes all it takes when I'm looking upon the icon of Christ, maybe just to go a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, and when I'm looking upon the person and find Christ in that person. So let us do it that way. Service. How do we serve one another? People look upon us and what do they see? If they see that joy, they probably want and are wondering, where does she get it or where does he get it? I want piece of that. Not just a piece of that, I want all of it so that I can also share it with the world. I already used the word billboard. We are, how do we show Christianity to the world? Where are the billboards? As you travel and you see many billboards in the world, some messages you like, some messages we do not like. What is the message that you and I actually show the, the world if we follow the good news? As uh, Matthew Kelly put it in my quote here, or paraphrase, he said, is your billboard Catholic, and I'll add the word Christian, and, and miserable, or is it Catholic and surviving, or is it Catholic, Christian, and thriving? Catholic, Christian, and thriving, that is my prayer, that all of us can be that way. Sometimes I think as we reflect and look upon the early Christians, maybe we have lost that seal. Can it be renewed? Yes, it can. Because many saints have renewed it for us. So as we serve those most entrusted to us, the students, all of our staff at the Catholic schools, we can be sharing that good news because it is powerful when it is put into actions. Yes, gospels are beautiful when we, we read them, but once we put them into action, they're just amazing. Especially the action of service, serving one another, loving truly. Because those are two basic realities of the gospel. When we look at it, that people are meant to be loved, and things are meant to be used, but isn't it sometimes when we look upon the world that things are vice versa? That people are being used and things are actually loved? as disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because each and every one is called to proclaim the good news, as we heard in today's Gospel of Mark. Not just Father Glenn, myself, uh, or the priests, the nuns, and the bishops, but each and every one of us is called to that service, to proclaim the good news. Because in our baptism, we have received royal priesthood, so we gotta live it. You know, anything I tell you today is nothing in comparison what you can do by living powerfully the gospel message. When you see somebody living it to the fullest, you will say, what is it that she has? What is it that he has? I want a piece of that. By serving our students and each other, we ask one another many questions. We ask our students, what do you want to be when you grow up? And those are valid questions. 
beautiful questions, but I, I want to challenge you today that as we serve our students, that maybe we should be start to ask the question, what did God try to tell you today? What did Jesus try to tell you today? I know they might look at you as probably as you're thinking right now, as a freak, but if we repeat it a couple of times, and if we tell them what God is telling us today, as we serve one another, and as we have come as the body of Christ as a community to be together. And if that is on our mind constantly, then we will actually, we will live and that word of God will become part of us. We're not just going to hear it, but when the question is asked, what did God try to tell you today? And if I can actually answer that question on a daily basis, then I'm going to be growing in that service. I'm going to be growing in that love for God, and especially I got to show my love for God through the love of the neighbor, through the love of all the people that God shows me each and every day. In the conclusion, yes, I know our crosses sometimes are heavy, and I thank you for the service to our Edmonton Catholic Schools and to the church on behalf of the church. And cross can be heavy, but I want to remind you that, you know, Remember that Christ is always there next to you, helping you carry that cross. According to the Gospel of John, the Last Supper, he took water and a basin and a towel and he washed their feet and he said, go into the world and serve. We're called to the same. We're called to the same brothers and sisters, friends of Jesus. So, even though we might say, Lord, my cross is too heavy, Help me carry it. But I believe that each and every one of us can actually serve with a towel, offer a towel of love, compassion, forgiveness, care, and gentleness. Amen. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church during this Easter season, calling us to see Jesus in our brothers and sisters everywhere, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders working together to find solutions to our common global problems, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who call out in their need and for those who respond, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members of our school division working to be faithful followers of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our afternoon of grace for the heart and soul, that we may be inspired to serve God and each other, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering and for those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers together, my friends, let us say the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And let us pray, my friends. Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks and praise for this gift of this day, for the time that we will get to spend together and to serve you through service of others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, my friends, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.